Praise the Lord. So this is the second part of the um, revelation that God gave one of our sisters in Uganda. And um, I pray that God will give us understanding of what uh, he has, is trying to pass across to the church. Now, God gave one of our sisters, she's in Uganda, a revelation. She was in the church. The church was like a flat. So it's as if once you finish the service, you all enter into your different um, rooms within the church. So when she entered into the room, after service, she went into her own room. She opened the door, she entered. Then she went to the group of the church where she was going. In the dream, not a actual church. It's God gave her a depiction of a church in the dream. Where she, so they, they had a WhatsApp group. So when she entered her room, she saw that people were saying, Wow, what a wonderful message. Wow, I am blessed. Oh, God touched me. So this service is awesome. This is lovely. This is beautiful. So she was now scrolling to see what is the message that they are all rejoicing for. What is that message that everybody is happy to, 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 to enjoy? What has made the whole church so lively that they are saying the message was wonderful? Finally, she saw the message. It was a video. So she clicked on the video to see the video that everybody has been rejoicing over and it was pornography. She was confused. Ah. She went to check again. This is church group. <laughs> and she still search again. What exactly are they looking at? Am I the one that went to click the wrong file? She search and search again to another message that the church is saying today was wonderful. Today is good. And they all were linking to the message. And she clicked on the message. It was a video. When she saw it again, it was pornography. Then she was confused. Why is the church celebrating pornography? Why is the message that people are rejoicing over, why is it pornography? To the extent that it was even beginning to affect her negatively. That was the revelation that God gave her sister. So when she gave me the revelation, she told me the revelation. I almost shouted that, ah, God is simply saying that majority of the messages that the church is celebrating today are to the sight of God the same equation with pornography. That is, when a person is watching pornography and the person is watching some of the majority of the messages that is coming out of the church today that the church is celebrating oh today what a motivational message oh that man of God oh God is saying in his own view that message and pornography are the same thing this is very very serious this is very very serious those messages that we are celebrating. Oh, I was motivated. Oh, every message that does not carry Christ as his central focus. Every message that reduces Jesus. Every message that is not talking about Jesus solely. Every message that is not pointing people to Jesus, Jesus is simply saying that to him, that message and pornography are at the same level. And this is a big matter. This is a big matter. And while I was thinking it over, in all, and I started quickly reviewing what I teach. 
I started reviewing the kind of teachings I have. I discovered that there was no time in the whole history of Jesus where Jesus preached and people stood up and said, Right on, Pastor. Say it, Pastor. Nice message, Pastor. Then after, the, after Jesus finished preaching, people now came and started dancing. I never saw it in the whole ministry of Jesus. Not once. I left Jesus and went to the early church. And, 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 I, and I looked at how they did their services. I looked at the discussions they had. I look at the letters of Brother Paul to the church. There was no letter from Brother Paul that you will finish reading as a congregation and you will start dancing. Not one. Where did the church today get its our home messages from? Where? God is saying that all those funny messages that is dumping everywhere. All those messages they com- compiled into uh, devotionals that we are reading every morning. Messages that does not break you down for Christ. What is God calling? What is God? What is God equating it to? Pornography. Ha. <laughs> I wish God could open our eyes. Many of us have been so blinded and so deafened by the way things have so gone wrong. There is a church in Nigeria, a very big church. Very big church in Nigeria. When that church started, it was just like the Bible times. When you go to service, <laughs> then they used to call the church the, the church of criers. Why? After the founder of the church finished preaching, you can never see anybody say, ah, youth, excellent youth, please meet after the service. Uh, glorious women, our meeting is after. You can never see such announcement. Why? Everybody has gone back to God and they are weeping and they are crying and they are sorting out their matters with God. And that is why in those days, that church was bringing now solid Christians. Then one day they did this buttons change hand. And somebody decided, no, we too want to join the dancers. We too want to join the genera. And today, it has gone. Today, now in Nigeria, every Sunday, the number of churches where they preach and the members weep, God breaks them down. A very few. We now have spiritual motivational speakers. And the revelation God gave her sister does not talk, stop in Nigeria because she's, she's not even in Nigeria. She's in Uganda. <laughs> so is it, is a church for, is a message for the whole body of Christ. What are we doing? What have we done? Where are we? Why are we doing things like this way? Is this what Jesus taught us? Was that the message Jesus gave you? Did you go through the whole teachings of Jesus? Did you see motivational speaking there? Do you see motivational messages? Do you see prosperity messages? Do you see messages that were preaching and uh, celebrating healing? Healing was part of the things that happen when they come to church. It wasn't a major topic. (laughs) It's something that happens. Jesus was the topic. Obeying Jesus was the topic. Breaking from sin, self, self, your selfish body, your flesh, and following Jesus. The instructions of Jesus were the things they were doing. That was what church was all about. 
But today, God is looking down from heaven and saying, that thing that you are celebrating to me is, is, is the same level as pornography. Hmm. At a certain time, I thought I was having problems because I find it difficult. Now, if I sit down to listen to message, I'll be wondering, what is this man saying? What is this woman saying? But Jesus said, why are you, saying, why are you teaching people things that Jesus never said? Oh, now I know. Now I know why the messages are getting irritating. Because they are pornography to the Holy Spirit. It compares them with pornography. That thing that people are celebrating. Oh, oh, that man of God. Oh, if you hear him teach about this. Oh, the principles of this. The principles of that. The mystery of this. And God is looking at him and saying, you are a pornographer. (laughs) And this goes for teachers of the word of God. You will think, ah, I just did an exposition. I did an exposition. Oh, I explained this. If it does not point to Jesus and the instructions of Jesus to make heaven, all you have done when heaven compares it is pornography. Simple. No wonder. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said on the last day, people will come and tell me, I did great things in your name. To them, they thought they did something. They thought they preached messages. They thought they had services. They thought they had churches. They thought they had men. Oh God, I did this, I did that. Oh, people were celebrating me. People called me from America, from Germany, from Uganda, from Zambia. Oh, when I step into a country, people gather to hear the word of God. Things happen. And God is saying, I don't know you. Same way I don't know the porn star. I don't know you. Same way, I don't know that man who has plenty wives. I don't know you. All the works you did, you did it out of obedience. You did it in disobedience. I don't know you. I don't know you. And many of us still continue doing things the same old way. And Jesus keeps, ah, oh, Jesus. The Bible is in our hand. We can read it. We can see what Jesus has said, but no. I have said it. If I preach a message and I discover everybody is also preaching that message, I'm going to check it again. Am I sure I'm still preaching the truth? What did the Bible say about this matter? <laughs> There's a teaching I'm yet to, I'm yet to do because the Holy Spirit is yet to sit there and teach me. That's about crowns and, uh, when we die, how many crowns in heaven and things like that? He has not sat down to teach me, so I don't know yet. <laughs> and I've apologized in the group already that I don't know what I was teaching before because I was just teaching what I've heard. Now, I need to go and sit down and hear from the Holy Spirit. Brethren, teachers, please, can I beg of you? Can I, can I beg of you? All this your uh, uh, exposition, biblical exposition, uh, deep revelation, mystery teaching, and all the whatnot. Can you please just start teaching about Jesus? Can you just go straight to the point now and face Jesus? Can we teach people the instructions of Jesus? Can we prepare people for heaven? All these various messages we are doing, if it is not preparing people for heaven, Directly. We will not get to heaven and Jesus says, I don't know you. And all the works that you think you have done, all your lesson notes, that, that very big book you carry in your house, that you cherish, that, oh, out of these, I have 7,000 messages. Ah, you know, I preach there, I preach there. May that thing not be pornography in, in the face of God. And that goes for the music, for the choir members among us. May the whole of your singing not be pornography before God. Oh, I love that song. Oh, that lost sister. The way she used to do praise worship. She would stand there and say, Everybody, let go. 
the all of us, leg up, everybody jump right, hold your neighbor, now begin to run around, follow me, they go, Baba, follow me, they go, they go, they go, oh, I am running up, and they you turn around, oh, jump, everybody, one, two, jump like David, jump, hey, hey, hey. and all that we do, may God not be looking down from heaven, and looking down, see, these guys, they are just in clubs. They've only named the club Church of God. They and those in the nightclub dancing naked are exactly the same thing. Because the songs that you decide to sing, God didn't back it. Your, your, your choir administration, God was not there. Everything you do, God was absent. And yet we are celebrating. We are celebrating. And God is looking down from heaven and looking at the church. And saying, if it is not Jesus, if it is something else, then I compare it together. It's the same thing with pornography. And brethren, it's so simple. Where the porn star will go is where Jesus sent all those ministers that he said I didn't know you. <laughs> Where the owner of the clubhouse will go is exactly the place the owner of the church house will go if he's not in Christ. If Christ is not recognizing what he's doing. If what she's doing cannot be found in Christ. Where the kidnapper who is cutting people's heads for ritual is going is where the prayer warrior leader who is not in Christ is going so brethren if God says what we are doing wrong is compared to pornography it's because where the pornography person is going is where every other person that did not follow Jesus strictly we go <laughs> I pray that God will help us these revelations are very key. This is a message to the church. A serious message to the church. Everyone to go back to Christ now. And let's stop all this show of show of shame that we are doing, show of flesh, show of anointing. You never saw Jesus doing show of power. What, he, what was he doing? He was, he was ensuring that everything he said was what God said in heaven. To the extent that Jesus told them, and Jesus cannot lie. He said that every word I speak, I hear from my father. If my father do not speak, I do not speak. Can we get to that point? Where if Jesus did not speak, you will not speak. And if something has been speaking to you all this while, telling you to preach messages that are outside Christ, please go for deliverance. Go to God. Tell Jesus to deliver you because you have not been hearing Jesus. Jesus cannot teach something different from what Jesus has said. Jesus said, uh, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot take it now. So I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Who will remind you all oh, that I have taught you. It will guide you in all things. It will remind you all that I have taught you. And Jesus now said, the Holy Spirit will not speak of his own. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will only speak what I have said. That's Jesus speaking. And Jesus will not speak of his own. Jesus will only speak what God has said. Now, if our God, when he brought out the perfect promise he gave man. Because when man sinned in the book of Genesis chapter 3, God told man I will send the seed of the woman to bruise the head of the serpent. And that seed of the woman is Jesus. And Jesus did not come until we got to the New Testament. So what we had in the Old Testament was not a permanent way. It was a temporary situation. Man has lost contact with God. Man has sinned. And man cannot get to God. So God put a temporary situation down. Same way God did to Adam and Eve. When they saw that they were naked, what did God do? God killed an animal for a temporary solution. Same way God 
God allowed the killing of animals, the offering of sacrifices, all the tithes and offerings and all the rest of them. God allowed it as a temporary measure while we wait for what God promised to the solution to the sin of Adam and his wife. So when Jesus came, Jesus became the solution. So the temporary has passed because it was just a temporary measure. It was a measure put in place, temporary, waiting for the permanent. Now the permanent has come, and that is Jesus. So everything you do outside of Jesus is a sin. Every service and service style, every denominational doctrine, everything we gather together that cannot be found in Jesus becomes a sin. It becomes an abomination. And that's why Jesus says, since the, today's church is still operating, majority of our churches today are still operating as an Old Testament church, as a temporary feature. And unfortunately, some of these churches did not start like that. They started as a New Testament church. But the hunger for plenty, because the world will rather prefer the Old Testament church than the New Testament church, were left the new and went back to the old. And God is saying, all he sees that is disobedience. And that can be compared to pornography. To him, that service, where we all gathered, starting from the praise worship to the end of the service, and everything we did was about flesh, was to please our flesh, was to make ourselves happy, rather than to hear the word of God, to be broken down so that we can make it to heaven. To him, it's as if we have gathered in a cinema house and they have put pornography on the altar and we are all watching it and laughing. That's what it looks like. I see Jesus' message breaking down the flesh and waking up the spirit. Motivational speaking only wakes up your flesh. <laughs> it wakes up self. The message of God breaks down self. So brethren, this is the revelation that God gave one of our sisters. And this is the interpretation that God has given us. It's a serious matter. Hmm. It's a matter that made me sit down and start looking at what I teach. I hope I'm teaching people Jesus. I hope it's Jesus I'm teaching. I hope I've not told them about myself. I hope I've not told them about denomination. Thank God we don't even have a denomination. I hope I've not told them uh, anything outside Jesus. Because if I have taught them anything outside Jesus, that would be pornography to God. The whole of my years here will just be a wasted year. Ah, that will not happen in Jesus' name. So, I will be very intentional about every message. I'll be very intentional about my response. I'll be very intentional about everything that I do. And I'll be satisfied that Christ will hurt to us as he deems places. And if he does not want to hurt to us, if he wants to reduce from us, glory be to God. <laughs> it has to be all about Christ. I pray that this revelation will form a serious new thinking line for some of us. It will allow some of us go back to the Bible and go and read about Jesus who is the permanent now and follow strictly after Jesus. And may we stop all these uh, stories that we are reading in the Bible. May we focus on Jesus. I pray that God will help us in Jesus now. I have discovered a few people are very angry with me because I say Jesus and Jesus alone. And I understand because Jesus is the offense. <laughs> Even so-called Christians are offended when you say Jesus is enough. To them, Jesus cannot be enough. They need to add other things to it. I bet people tell me that the whole of the Bible is Jesus. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said the whole of the scriptures. He's talking about the scriptures that the Old Testament uh, Pharisees and Sadducees were using. He said, they point to me. <laughs> 
So Jesus is not saying, I am the whole scriptures. So go and read everywhere, it is me. That's not what Jesus said. Don't twist the word of Jesus. Jesus said the whole of the laws, the whole of the scriptures, they are pointing to Jesus. So they are saying that, don't look at us, look at Jesus. They point to Jesus. If all of us stand together and we are pointing to one person, what are we saying? Don't take us serious. Take this person serious. This person is the matter. This person is the important thing. This person is the final thing. So Jesus said the whole of the scriptures is pointing to him. And that is why he is the fulfillment of the scriptures. I pray that God will help us to focus on Jesus. I pray that God will help us to get it right. I pray that God will give us the grace to follow Jesus. Obey Him. Totally. May God grant us the grace in Jesus. And can we take this matter to God in prayers? You know where God has spoken to you from this revelation. Can we take it to God in prayers? Thank you very much. God bless you.